Okay. Good morning, everybody. Today, uh, we are going to have, I can say, maybe the last lecturer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Toh Sensei will give you a lecture. So I uh, now I think time is, uh, we are going to start. So I would like to give. Uh, oh, oh yeah, before starting this, uh, lecture, I would like to inform you. Please check your chat, yeah, because I will send PDF of uh Toh Sensei lecture. Okay, so time is for you, Sensei. You can start. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Bibin Sensei. Okay, can you see my slide? Okay, so today I'll speak about the computational analysis of proteins derived from aquatic organisms. So before starting my talk, I'll, uh, I'll explain my expertise. My expertise is uh, uh, evolutionary protein informatics. So, uh, I'm, investig I'm investigating how a protein family has evolved or how a new fun a protein has uh, acquired a new function during the course of evolution or which amino acid residues are involved in the function or functional divergence. For that analysis, the uh, various type of the molecular biology data uh, uh, is required. Uh, in my case, uh, we use nucleotide sequences, which encode proteins are used for the analysis. And uh, of course, we use the amino acid sequence of the proteins. Uh, and uh, we use uh, protein three-dimensional structures, and sometimes we use genomic informations. Today, uh, I'll introduce you the how to use amino acid sequence and 3D structure for the uh, computation analysis of proteins. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the uh, protein informatics is, uh, so computation analysis of proteins a general approach, not restricted to the uh, proteins of the aquatic organisms. But today, I'll focus on the proteins uh, uh, derived from aquatic organisms. Because, uh, you know, the, uh, okay, so, uh, the uh, proteins derived from aquatic organisms are very uh, specific uh, in order to uh, adapt to the uh, aquatic environment. And, uh, some of such proteins are very useful uh, for the uh, for us. Okay, so uh, at the first, I'll show an example of the proteins, uh, which is used for widely used for the uh, biological studies. The protein is uh, equoline. So equoline is derived from a uh, so a jellyfish. Uh, I think you can see there. Okay, so this is a jellyfish, E. coli Victoria. The E. coli is obtained from the uh, this jellyfish, and uh, this is a uh, 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 involved in the bioluminescence. So uh, this is a three-dimensional structure of E. coli, and uh, uh, and E. coli is bound to uh, a small molecule, uh, uh, coherent uh, terazine. But under the hyper uh, concentration of calcium ion, the uh, coherent tyrosine uh, trans, uh, transformed into uh, uh, coherent uh, teramide. And associated with this uh, transformation, blue light is issued. So, but uh, in the uh, actual uh, 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 jellyfish body, the blue light is absorbed in the uh, green fluorescent proteins. Uh, it is also a proteins derived from the uh, jellyfish. And uh, then the green fluorescent proteins uh, issue the uh, green light. So the E. coli, uh, as I told, the, uh, this uh, blue light emission is uh, uh, regulated by the calcium uh, concentration of the calcium, calcium ion. 
So it could it can be used as a calcium sensor. And now uh, the protein, the E. coli and the GFP is uh, widely utilized for a reporter gene in a wide range of bio biological studies. And uh, this study uh, 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 and the Nobel Prize uh, uh, was awarded to uh, this study in 2008. Okay, let's see the video of the E. coli. A corn is made of three calcium binding domains and a chromophoric ligand called cholinterazine. When aquaria is stimulated, its striated muscles release calcium that binds to these domains. When calcium binds, the protein complex catalyzes into apoacorin and an excited state of cholinteramide. As cholinteramide relaxes to its ground state, blue light photons are emitted. Through the process of BRET, the blue light produced by a corn is used to excite the chromophore in nearby GFP. Okay, so thus the uh, we can find uh, we, uh, uh, there's a possibility to find uh, uh, new materials uh, from the uh, proteins uh, derived from the uh, aquatic organisms, and today. Uh, I'll show or uh, uh, I introduce uh, proteins uh, derived from a barnacles as a uh, uh, possible candidate of such proteins. Uh, so the introduction is uh, separated into two uh, two parts. So at first, I uh, introduce barnacles and uh, their proteins. It is uh, adhesive proteins. And the uh, uh, second part of the introduction is uh, uh, how to uh, investigate the, the uh, proteins uh, by the computational approach. But I don't enter in, I want to enter into the details of the uh, computational analysis, such as uh, algorithms or something like that. So the, uh, I'll tell you the very basic uh, basics of the computational analysis. After that, uh, I, I try to uh, analyze uh, uh, adhesive proteins uh, uh, by using the computer. Okay, the first part of the introduction. Barnacles, uh, what is a barnacles and uh, what is the adhesive proteins? I think you know the barnacles. You can find the barnacles in the uh, uh, beach. So the barnacles uh, attached on the rocks in the beach. Uh, and the barnacles are highly special, a specialized group of crustaceans. So crustaceans uh, means that uh, uh, it is, uh, okay? So crustaceans is uh, uh, a member of the arthropods and uh, uh, here's a barnacles. And uh, it means that the uh, barnacles uh, close to the, uh, uh, crayfish, crab, and shrimps. So the barnacles seems to be a sh uh, uh, the shellfish, but uh, it is not a shellfish or mollusk. So uh, it is a, a member of the uh, uh, relatives of the uh, shrimp, crab, and crayfish. Okay, and uh, one of the, uh, the uh, feature of the uh, specific feature of the barnacles, which distinguish uh, from the other uh, uh, crustaceans is it, uh, 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 the barnacles have developed a sessile lifestyle as adults. So attaching themselves to various substrates such as, so in this case, logs, and as I'll show later, uh, uh, it also attached to the ships, whales, or sea turtles. Okay, and uh, as I told, I'm an evolutionary biologist, and uh, uh, the father of the evolution, uh, evolutionary study is uh, Darwin. And uh, it is not well known, but uh, uh, Darwin was attracted by barnacles. 
Darwin investigated Barnacles eight years. Then the result of his study was published as a full volume of books and he was awarded the Royal Medal from Royal Society by this work. And it is told that the research had deepened Darwin's insight into the natural selection. Okay, and okay, I already uh, mentioned about it. Okay, this is a phylogenetic tree of the barnacles. Uh, there are, uh, roughly speaking, there are two types of barnacles. And this is a acorn barnacles, okay? But the uh, a different type of barnacles exist. So they are, uh, they are called stoked barnacles. So, uh, 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 different uh, uh, from the barnacles, uh, it has a, a, a the stalk, and the main body uh, exists in the tip of the uh, stalk. Okay, uh, this is a curtain drawing showing the uh, 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 the similarity of the body design of the. Uh, uh, crustaceans. Okay, this is a normal uh, body plan of the crustaceans. So uh, I think you can imagine the uh, shrimps. So this is a head, and this is a uh, uh, segments, and this is a uh, 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 legs. So uh, a pair of leg uh, is uh, extended from uh, e e each uh, segment. Okay, so this is a, a, a acorn type barnacle. Acorn type barnacle lay on its back uh, uh, in the shell. Okay, uh, so this is a back and this is a head and this is a segment and they extend its legs uh, uh, towards the out, up, uh, upside. Okay, and this is a stock type barnacles. Okay, uh, so here is a, a main body and the segment, and the legs are uh, extended in the uh, uh, in this uh, uh, directions. Okay, so uh, uh, it is also shows the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, anatomical structure of the uh, the acorn barnacles and the stocked barnacles. As, as I told the uh, in the case of Econ Banaco, uh, it's lay on its back in the shell and extend its legs uh, outside. Uh, likewise, uh, it is a stocked Banaco, so head and the main body and the legs is extended outside. Okay, uh, this slide shows the uh, lifestyle of the Banacos, uh, Econ Banacos. So, acorn barnacles, uh, uh, in the development uh, of the acorn barnacles, uh, uh, it uh, starts as a pre swimming larva called uh, no, uh, no polyus. And the no polyus uh, uh, develops uh, uh, by the uh, six stages. And after six stages, the, uh, it transformed into so metamorphosed into the uh, spread larva, and the spread larva uh, is attached to the uh, uh, so ground of the uh, sea, and it metamorphosed to the uh, uh, juvenile uh, acorn barnacle. And in order to attach the uh, uh, to, uh, bottom of the sea, uh, it uh, releases a barnacle glue. Uh, so the barnacle glue is uh, today's subject. Okay, let's see the uh, strange lives, uh, to, uh, life of the barnacles. Finding a date is hard enough in San Francisco, but it's especially tricky when you're stuck to a rock in the middle of the bay. Still, 
Acorn barnacles don't get discouraged. These crusty little animals actually have a pretty wild sex life. At low tide, each one is sealed up inside its own miniature fortress, shielded by a ring of armored plates. The two central plates press together to form a watertight seal so they don't dry out in the open air. They're ready and waiting for the tide to rise so they can get down to business. But first, they need to freshen up a bit. The barnacle unfurls eight pairs of delicate feathery legs called cirri, which they use to absorb oxygen from the water. The legs filter out plankton and debris churned up by the waves, bringing the catch inside to the mouth. They may not look like it from the outside, but beneath their shell, it's easier to see that barnacles are crustaceans related to crabs and shrimp. After a nice meal, it's ready for some action. The little barnacle lets loose the longest penis of any animal relative to its body size, of course. Stretching up to eight times the length of the barnacle itself. And this penis has skills. It can taste and smell, and the tip can feel around, probing to see which neighbors have ripe eggs inside. When it finds what it's looking for, the barnacle delivers sperm to fertilize the eggs. Barnacles aren't exactly prudes. Pretty much everyone is fair play because they're all hermaphrodites, simultaneously male and female. Sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes more. Barnacles are nurturing parents too. They hold onto their fertilized eggs and protect them until they hatch. These cuties are their baby larvae called Noplii. This is the young barnacle's chance for adventure. They roam the sea searching for food and growing. If they survive long enough, the barnacle larvae mature into cyprids. At this stage, the barnacle doesn't eat. The cyprids' only mission is to find the ideal spot to glom onto before it starves. Having survived the trials of youth, the barnacle settles in. Now it's time to get to know the neighbors. Hey neighbor, you just watched our 150th episode of Deep Look. If you've been with us a while, leave us a note in the comments below. And if you're new, hello. Please subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any notifications for our new episodes. See you next time. Okay, so this is a strange lifestyle of the barnacles. And if you have a chance to go to the beach, please uh, examine the barnacles carefully. Okay, so the, uh, 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 as I told, the, uh, one of the uh, 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 feature of barnacles, which is distinctive from the other uh, crustacean is uh, adult barnacles attached to hard substratum uh, with a cement-like secretion. Okay, so uh, not only so uh, as I show uh, uh, as I shown uh, in this picture, so uh, slide the barnacles uh, attached uh, on the uh, locks, but it also uh, attached to the surface of the whales. Okay, you can see. This is a, a tail of the a whale, and this is a belly of the whales. Then the, only the barnacles benefit from the attaching, attaching to the whales, but uh, to no biological cost to the whale. Attached to the whale gives the barnacles a stable place to live, a free ride, and uh, 
access to plenty of fluid. This type of symbiotic relationship is known as a common, uh, commensalism. Okay. Okay, let's see the movie again. Uh, this is a, a movie of the uh, whale watching. He's, he's, he's like, this one is gonna like be like a... Wow. That they, is, they that gave me, yeah, wow. they gave me palpitations. I think they're planning something. Cook, cook. Let's back out a little bit. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I saw his eye. Oh, that's it. That's it. We need to leave. Mom, he just. Oh my God! Did you see what he just did? Holy I to leave. Oh my. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, this is like barnacles, like whale barnacles. His. So the whale uh, often uh, jumping out of the water. The behavior is called breaching, but the meaning of the whale breaching is still unknown. And there's a several explana possible explanations of the breaching. So get rid of the parasites and threat the behavior to rival males, call the separate behavior to attract female whales, just playing. But uh, considering the movie, uh, the uh, uh, there's a possibility of the uh, get uh, type one. So the by uh, doing the breaching, the uh, whale uh, try to uh, get rid of the barnacles uh, on the surface. Maybe uh, it is itchy. And uh, in addition to whales, uh, barnacles are. Uh, uh, also attached to the uh, shell of the sea turtles. And most barnacles do not hurt sea turtles as they are only uh, attached to the shell or skin on the outside. Uh, but sometimes it burrow into the skin of the host and uh, might cause discomfort and provide an open uh, target area for following infections. And excessive barnacle, barnacle cover can be a sign of general bad health of the turtle. Okay, you can see the picture. In this case, almost entire body is uh, surface is uh, covered by the barnacles. And usually, sea turtles are deliberated. At, okay, I can see the uh, this part. Yeah, deliberated first and then become covered in an extensive amount of other organisms such as barnacle and agar. And uh, the barnacle attachment makes uh, the turtle very inconvenient to move. Okay, let's see the movie. Uh, so there are volunteers who remove the barnacle from the uh, surface of the turtle. Okay, so I show the uh, uh, barnacles attached to the uh, uh, surface of the uh, whales and uh, uh, sea turtles. 
but uh, there was a mystery about the attachment of the barnacles on the surface of the whale and the sea turtle. So in the case of the whales, the dead skin or cuticle of whale is removed from the skin's surface during the turnover of the skin. And uh, in the case of sea turtles, turtles undergo the uh, epidysis of their shells in the growing process. But the problem uh, as a mystery is uh, barnacles continue to attach the surface of the skin or our shell of the turtle. But the mechanisms, the mechanisms uh, has not been revealed yet. Okay, the, uh, I'll show the uh, uh, attachment of the barnacles on the uh, surface of the whales and the uh, sea turtles, but the uh, more important problem of the uh, attachment of the barnacles is uh, so the bar barnacles attach to the bottom of a ship and or water circulating pipes of the power plants and factories. Okay, uh, this is an electric power plant and this is a circulating pi uh, water circulating pipes. So, oh, excuse me, I try to change it to the laser pointer. So this is a, a water circulating pipe. And this is the inside of the uh, water circulating pipes. Okay, uh, uh, this is a pillar to uh, uh, maintain the, uh, uh, this pipe. And uh, uh, people will, uh, try to remove the barnacles uh, from the pillars. And this is a uh, 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 pipes. And as you can see, there are many uh, barnacles attached. And uh, uh, this web is, I, I think this web is placed at the entrance and the exit of the pi uh, to, or pipes, but the, uh, the uh, webs are also covered by the barnacles. And uh, <clears throat> uh, such uh, the barnacles, uh, the attachment, uh, 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 reduces the efficiency of the power plant. So the, uh, as shown in this picture, the people try to remove the barnacles, but uh, it takes enormous amount of labor and money to remove the attached uh, organisms, including, so not only the barnacles, but various uh, organisms attached, uh, but the, anyway, uh, here is a, a main uh, organisms of barnacles in this case, and the, uh, to, uh, anyway, the, uh, it takes enormous amount of labor and money to remove the uh, barnacles, and an uh, estimate of the cost is more than one billion per, uh, one billion dollar per year all over the world. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, picture shows the barnacles attached to the propeller of the ship, and the bottom of the ship. So barnacles attached to uh, a ship. Uh, increase the water flow resistance, which cause more than 10% decrease of speed and more than 40% increase of very exp expense. So the barnacle attachment on, uh, on the uh, bottom of the ship or the uh, 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 water circulating pipes of the electric power plant is a very uh, important problem for the human economy. Okay, let, let's see the movie again.
Okay, so the I'll show uh, the uh, barnacles uh, attached on the uh, uh, on the surface of the uh, uh, so the uh, bottom of the ship and the uh, uh, power plants, uh, the water uh, tube of the power plants, and uh, <coughs> uh, for the uh, attachment, barnacles use a uh, secreted a glue. So uh, the, uh, this is a life cycle of the barnacles. Uh, I already showed this uh, as a figure. And uh, as I told, the uh, uh, separate larva. Uh, so the uh, no, uh, no previous larva is a free swimming, uh, uh, free swimming organisms, but uh, uh, it transformed uh, into the uh, so meta uh, 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 to transformed into separate larva. Uh, it uh, <clears throat> uh, attached on the ground. So uh, okay. So uh, excuse me. Okay, separate move around the surface of the hard structure to find a place for its sessile place. And to stick to the surface, a glue called the footprint is secreted. Okay, so before that, uh, so this, if the uh, cypress larva uh, select this uh, region uh, as a sessile place, then uh, it secretes a, a footprint. And after that, excuse me. You. Okay, so after that, uh, head of the uh, cypress larva attached uh, itself permanently to a hard structure with an instant glue called the separate cement. Uh, separate, uh, cement. So the, after uh, stick to the uh, a, a ground by using the footprint, the head is uh, attached to the, uh, to, oh, the uh, place by using the uh, separate, uh, separate cement. Then uh, adult barnacles release a barnacle glue called the cement. Uh, to attach the regions, okay? So the uh, three types of glues are secreted from the, uh, uh, the barnacles. But today uh, I'll speak about the glues released from the adult barnacles. Okay, uh, there are two approaches to the barnacle fouling. And uh, well, the first one is how to avoid the barnacle fouling. fouling. Uh, as I told, the barnacle fouling uh, is a, a quite uh, important problem for the human economy. So uh, there are many investigations to uh, how to avoid the barnacle fouling. And uh, uh, as this is uh, shown here, the barnacle firing has been investigated more than five, 50 years. However, most of the studies have been devoted to the uh, how to avoid the barnacle firing. The other is mimic the barnacle firing. Okay, okay, let's try to see. So, how to avoid the barnacle firing? So. Uh, uh, one of the way is uh, anti-fouling paint. Okay, you uh, you can see the people try uh, to paint the uh, surface uh, surface of the ship by by the anti-fouling paint. The paint, including organic uh, arsenic or mercury, were applied to the bottom to the ship. The paint, including uh, stannate, was found to be effective in the 60s, and the paint was widely utilized. But in uh, 1965, the accum accumulation of stannate in organic uh, organic organisms, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, it is a, a mistake. So uh, it is uh, oceanic organisms was uh, 
ascertained and uh, it was suggested in the 90s that the stunate may act as an endocrine disruptor. The paint, including stunate, was inhibited in 2003. Therefore, the development of the next generation anti firing compound has been activated. And uh, the, uh, so the, there is not so many examples, but uh, there are study to mimic the barnacle fouling. Uh, I'm not sure whether you have heard about the biomimicry, but the biomimicry is a concept to solve social problems and decrease the environmental load through the development of the new technology by learning the structure and the function of the living organisms. And there are studies to uh, mimic the uh, attachment of the barnacles. Okay, let's see the movies. Inspired by the sticky substance that barnacles used to cling to rocks, MIT engineers have designed a strong biocompatible glue that can seal injured tissues and stop bleeding. The new paste can adhere to some faces even when they are covered with blood and can form a tight seal within about 15 seconds of application. Such a glue could offer a much more effective way to treat traumatic injuries and to help control bleeding during surgery. The research paper appears in the journal Nature Biomedical Engineering. Finding ways to stop bleeding is a long-standing problem that has not been adequately solved. Sutures are commonly used to seal wounds, but putting stitches in place is a time-consuming process that usually is impossible for first responders to perform during an emergency situation. Among members of the military, blood loss is the leading cause of death following a traumatic injury and among the general population, it is the second leading cause of death following a traumatic injury. In recent years, some materials that can halt bleeding, also called hemostatic agents, have become commercially available. Many of these consist of patches that contain clotting factors, which help blood to clot on its own. However, these require several minutes to form a seal and don't always work on wounds that are bleeding profusely. The research team has been working to address this problem for several years. In 2019, the team developed a double-sided tissue tape and showed that it could be used to close surgical incisions. This tape, inspired by the sticky material that spiders use to capture their prey in wet conditions, includes charged uh, polysaccharides that can absorb water from a surface almost instantaneously, clearing of a small dry patch that the glue can adhere to. For the new tissue glue, the researchers once again drew inspiration from the natural world. This time, they focused their attention on the barnacle, a small crustacean that attaches itself to rocks, ship hulls, and even other animals such as whales. These surfaces are wet and often dirty, conditions that make adhesion difficult. The researchers' analysis of barnacle glue revealed that it has a unique composition. The sticky protein molecules that help barnacles attach to surfaces are suspended in an oil that repels water and any contaminants found on the surface, allowing the adhesive proteins to attach firmly to the surface. The MIT team decided to try to mimic this glue by adopting an adhesive they had previously developed. So the barnacle glue has a, a, a specific feature uh, to other uh, glues. So the uh, barnacle, uh, so the uh, cement is called glue. So the cement can glue two objects with totally different surface properties and rigidities. And the, uh, one of the object is a, a basal plate consisting of the calcium carbonate. So at the base of the uh, a barnacles itself, and the other object is the surface of the external su substrata. 
But the external substrate, uh, uh, sometimes it's a rock, and sometimes it's a surface of the whales, and sometimes it's a, a, a surface of the uh, shell of the sea turtles, and the uh, uh, bottom of the shape of the uh, wall of the uh, uh, power plant tube. So the, it can uh, uh, attach a totally different type of the object. It is a feature of the uh, Banaco groups. And the other feature is uh, it can uh, attach to object in water. It is an important point. So uh, when uh, in the surgery, uh, the, there are many blood. In the, such bleeding, the uh, the doctor uh, uh, needs to uh, 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 connect the uh, <coughs> cutting regions. So, uh, in such case, the barnacle, the this this feature is uh, very useful in the surgery. Therefore, they developed a new material uh, for the uh, uh, as a group for the surgery inspired by the uh, barnacles. Inspired? Okay, so this is an uh, uh, anatomical uh, 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 structure of the uh, barnacle, uh, acorn barnacles. And this is the anatomical structure of the uh, uh, stock type of barnacles. But the basic uh, the mechanism, the, uh, mechanism is the same. So I'll explain about the acorn barnacles. Okay, so at that barnacles and their cement apparatus is uh, explained in these figures. So uh, uh, in acorn barnacles, the cement ground, so this yellow parts, uh, cement grounds are clustered at the basal region. So uh, it is a basal region, basal region of their bodies and close to the uh, substrate. Okay, so uh, uh, sometimes it looks or a uh, uh, bottom of the uh, ship. Then the cement is a synthesis cement. So cement is a guru. So cement is synthesized in the uh, ground cells. So uh, uh, this is an uh, enlarged figure of the uh, uh, cement grounds. And this is, uh, uh, so this uh, the, uh, uh, region, so, are uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the ground cells. So cement is uh, cement is synthesized in the ground cells, and the ground cells uh, is uh, the cytoplasm of the ground cells is separated into a synthetic uh, region. So here is a synthetic region, and the secretory region. Here is a secretory region, and this part is a nucleus. And the, uh, the uh, synthesized cement is transferred to the uh, 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 collecting canals. So here is a collecting canals uh, from the secreted region. And uh, it goes to the uh, secondary canals. And finally, it goes to the uh, principal, uh, the PC means a principal canal. And uh, then uh, it uh, uh, secreted into the other uh, region region other uh, 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 regions. And the uh, uh, cement, uh, more than nine percent of the cement, a uh, uh, dried weight of the cement are constituted by proteins. Okay, so. But uh, uh, it is not a single protein. The, it is a mixture of the several different type of the proteins. And uh, some proteins are uh, involved in the interaction with water molecules and uh, ions. So for example, this one, this one interact with uh, uh, water molecules. Uh, or, and they, uh, there's no this, uh, description about the ion, but the, anyway, uh, uh, the, some cement proteins interact with the water molecules or with ions, and which are bound to the surface of the base plate and the external substrate. So the surface of the uh, uh, base plate. So this is a, a, 
bottom of the uh, barnacles, and this is a uh, uh, surface of the uh, external external substrate. And here's the water. So this protein interact with the with a uh, uh, water molecules or ions, uh, which bound to the uh, uh, base of plate or external substrate. And uh, the property is not to take into account for the glues used in the air. Mm. So uh, this is a spe uh, specific properties uh, uh, of the barnacle glue. And the two proteins in which hydroxy groups are abundant are involved in the interaction. So uh, the currently two proteins which interact with the uh, water molecules and ions are, are being identified. Okay, the second group, uh, second uh, cement protein group uh, is involved in the direct interaction with the surface of the basal plate and the external substratum. So uh, this protein interact with, uh, with the basal plate or external substratum uh, uh, via the water molecules or uh, ions. But uh, this protein, let's see that this protein, this protein and this protein, directly interact with the base of rate or external substrate. And the proteins which can interact with minerals such as calcium carbonate are involved in these uh, functions. And the third group is uh, uh, involved in the interaction between cement proteins. So uh, for example, uh, this one, so this one uh, and this one, they are interact with uh, uh, each other. So uh, two types of protein in which hydrophobic amino acids are abundant are involved in the uh, interaction between the cement proteins. Okay, so this is a, a concrete uh, a proteins, a cement proteins. Okay, uh, the cement proteins of barnacles include more than uh, uh, for proteins, which are not found in other organisms. Okay, I'll show you later that uh, it is a specific proteins and not found from the uh, uh, other uh, organisms than barnacles. And uh, currently, the uh, uh, amino acid sequence of the five cement proteins, uh, so they are the five cement proteins, uh, are available now. The cement proteins are classified into uh, three groups. So, uh, okay, so uh, this is a uh, three groups. And, uh, uh, okay, so uh, group one, proteins in which hydrophobic amino acid residue with a hydroxy group uh, abundant at the CP90K, this one, and the CP68K, and group two, uh, uh, the protein in which hydrophilic charged amino acid residues are abundant. And uh, this is uh, CP20K. And group three, proteins in which hydrophobic amino acid residues are abundant. So the, this is a uh, CP100K and CP52K. So, for example, group three, and it is a uh, uh, this proteins con, uh, proteins uh, contain many uh, hydrophobic amino acid residues, and uh, as I explained uh, in this slide, the such proteins uh, involved in the direct interaction between the uh, 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 cement proteins. Okay, I'll skip this one. Okay, I just inspired by that. Okay, I already explained it. Okay, so uh, it, uh, this is the introduction about the barnacles and the, uh, their adhesive proteins. And uh, from here, uh, I'll speak about the next introduction proteins and the uh, molecular evolution. But the, the subject is changed, so. Uh, I'll take a, a 10 minutes break uh, here, okay? Uh, Bibin says uh, it's okay. 
Bibin Sensei, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, <laughs> is absent. So uh, let's take a 10 minutes break and uh, let's go back to the 10 minutes after. Okay, okay, uh, let's take a 10 minutes break.
the proteins and the molecular evolution. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, basics of the analysis of the uh, computational analysis of the proteins. But uh, I'm afraid the background of the uh, attendance are different. So I'll uh, speak the uh, 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 I, I'll explain the, uh, uh, this part from the very basic point. So I'm afraid some students are uh, boring about this explanation. Okay, so okay. At first, uh, uh, so this is a quick review on the protein chemistry and the molecular evolution. Okay, the proteins consist of the 20 types of the amino acid residues, uh, amino acids. Uh, this is a, a structure of the amino acid. The amino acid uh, consists of the amino group and the carboxyl group. And uh, this part, so amino group, then this carbon and this carboxyl group is called the main chain. The, as I told, uh, we use the uh, 20 types of amino acid residue to constitute our proteins, but they, this part, uh, amino group, uh, this carbon and the uh, carboxy group are uh, uh, common uh, among the, all the uh, 20 types of the proteins. So this part's uh, called the main chain. And this carbon, uh, this carbon is called the alpha carbon. And uh, uh, from alpha carbon, the uh, side chain is uh, uh, extended. This side chain is different uh, from amino acid to amino acid. So the, uh, please remember that the amino acid consists of the main chain and the side chain. Main chain is common among the uh, 20 types of the uh, amino, acid, uh, amino acids and the side chain is different from amino acid to amino acid. Okay, so this is a, a chemical structure of the uh, amino acid. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so, but uh, in the uh, study of the uh, computational analysis of proteins, uh, it is troublesome to use the chemical structure themselves. In instead, uh, the aminas, uh, pro, uh, amino acid residues are uh, expressed as a, a one letter expression. So uh, this is a aspartic acid. The aspartic acid is uh -oh. aspartic acid is expressed as D. Likewise, this is a glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is expressed as E. So the each amino acid residues are expressed as a one letter uh, character. Uh, so in, in the sequence analysis of proteins, this one letter expression is often used. And uh, as I'll uh, explain later, the, uh, we also uh, analyze a uh, uh, three dimensional structure of the proteins. And the three dimensional structure of the proteins, the three letter expression of the uh, amino acid residues are often used. So, uh, as I told, uh, this is uh, aspartic acid. The aspartic, uh, the three letter expression of the aspartic is uh, ASP, and uh, this is a uh, glutamic acid, and the three letter expression of the uh, glutamic acid is a uh, GLU, and this is a uh, cysteine, and uh, this is a uh, three letter expression of the cysteine residues. Okay, so oh, this is the amino acid. Okay, so as I uh, explained in the previous slide, the amino acid consists of the uh, amino group and the carboxy group, and it is a, a alpha carbon, and this is a side chain. Okay, let's consider two amino acid, and the, uh, the uh, carboxy group of this amino acid and the amino group of this amino acid uh, interact with each other and the water is removed and the peptide bond, the uh, covalent bond called the peptide bond is generated between the two amino acid residues. Then dipeptide is generated. By repeating this process, long uh, string-like molecule is generated. It is a protein. 
but as I told, it is difficult to uh, show the uh, uh, treat the uh, chemical structure and the computational analysis. So instead of the actual uh, uh, the chemical structures, the uh, one letter expression is uh, often used in the sequence and amino acid sequence analysis in the computational uh, uh, study of the proteins. So uh, this is a uh, uh, amino acid sequence of the uh, proteins called lysozyme. Lysozyme is an enzyme which exists in our uh, tears and the no, uh, nose uh, water, uh, which involved in the, uh, uh, the uh, to, oh, oh, I don't know how to say, uh, to, uh, uh, so kills a bacteria. So if a bacteria uh, enter into our body, uh, especially in the, uh, the eyes and the nose, then the uh, lysozyme included in the tears and the nose water uh, kills a bacteria. Okay, so this is a one letter expression and the amino acid sequence has a direction. So the, uh, here is a, uh, uh, okay, here is a peptide bond of the dipeptide, but the, uh, here is a free uh, amino group and here is a, a free uh, carboxy group. So the, uh, when uh, the uh, long uh, storing like molecule uh, by connecting the many amino acid residues are uh, generated. The uh, free N-terminal group is present here. It is called the N-terminus. And the free carboxy group is present here. It is called the C-terminus. So the uh, C, uh, in this expression, one letter expression, the here is a N-terminus group, and here is a, uh, here is a N-terminal, and here is a C-terminal. Uh, so uh, uh, and uh, uh, so from N terminal to C terminal, so uh, uh, the long sequence cannot be uh, uh, expressed in the uh, single line. So uh, it is folded here, and uh, it is folded here. But uh, it is actually a single long uh, string-like molecules. So uh, in this case. Uh, the proteins, so lys human lysozyme consists of 148 amino acid residues. And amino acid sequences of the various proteins are, are stored in uh, databases. One of the representative data databases is uh, NCBS protein resource and the Uniprot. Uh, I've tried uh, to access NCBS protein resource uh, today's uh, lecture later. Okay, so the, as I told, uh, proteins uh, uh, or amino acid sequence is, is a, a storing like molecule, but when it exerts its activity, it uh, fold, uh, folded into a, a three-dimensional structures like this. So, in the case of the lysozyme, uh, this is a three-dimensional structure. And uh, by uh, taking a, a three-dimensional structure, uh, there is a, a region, a, a pocket-like region is generated. The pocket-like region, uh, by using the pocket-like region, the, it can bind to the uh, substrate molecule. In this case, a bacterial molecule uh, is bound, uh, bound to here and it exerts its activity to destroy the, this uh, bacterial molecule. And then the bacteria is killed. So when we consider the, uh, 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 in the computation analysis of the potents, uh, amino acid seek in the, uh, this, uh, in addition to the uh, amino acid sequence data, uh, the three-dimensional structure information is uh, important. Okay, uh, this is a, a, a expression of the three-dimensional structure of the proteins. Okay, so uh, uh, each line uh, indicates a, a, a coordinate data, coordinate of the uh, atoms con which constitute our uh, proteins. So, uh, for example, 
uh, the first line. It is, uh, uh, okay, this is a, a three-letter expression. Uh, this is a, a um, MET indicator uh, amino acid residue, uh, methionine. And uh, uh, this, mes uh, this line uh, indicates the methionine's uh, carbon atoms. And, uh, okay, so this is a X coordinate and this is a Y coordinate and this is a Z coordinate. And the next line, this is also a, a atom, uh, a oxygen, uh, this is an oxygen atom which constitutes a methionine residue, a, fa a first methionine residue and the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, the Z coordinate as shown here. But, uh, 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 so the, uh, this is a coordinate data and this is an expression of the three-dimensional structure of the proteins. But uh, we cannot get any information from the, uh, these series of the numerical values. In order to get some insight from this data, the visualization tool, so the graphics tools are required. So by using such a graphic source, these coordinate data is transformed into the three-dimensional structure, uh, structure image of the proteins. Then uh, we can see uh, where is a uh, pocket region or where the uh, uh, ligand is bound or something uh, like that. So not only the amino acid sequence data, but also the uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, data is required for the computational analysis of the proteins. So like the uh, uh, amino acid sequence data, three-dimensional uh, structure is also stored in the database. But uh, uh, in the case of the sequence data, several different databases exist, but uh, in the case of the three-dimensional structure of proteins, only one uh, a database uh, uh, exists. Uh, the database is called Protein Data Bank. And uh, the three branches uh, of the, uh, uh, the Protein Data Bank or PDB. And the PDB is maintained by the three uh, branches. So in Europe, uh, there exists PDBE, and in Japan, we have PDBJ and the United States, RCB PDB. The, these three branches uh, collaborate with each other to maintain the uh, database, uh, protein data bank. Okay, so I already explained this one. So, okay, so next uh, I'll explain the basics of the molecular evolution. At first, I'll explain the term homology. And homology is a term uh, used in the field of the evolutionary biology, but I'll explain the specific uh, meaning of the homology in the uh, protein evolution. So in the uh, case of the protein evolution, homology is used as a similarity in sequence and or structure among proteins derived from a common ancestry. Okay, uh, let's see the example. Okay, let's see the, uh, the okay, uh, this is a mouse and this is a human. And uh, in our blood, uh, we have a, a protein called hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin is a, a, a to, or, or heterotetramas. So, uh, uh, two alpha chain, uh, which uh, consists of the two alpha chains and two beta chains. And now uh, consider the uh, uh, hemoglobin alpha. Okay, so a uh, uh, mouse has a hemoglobin, uh, it's a hemoglobin alpha, and the human also has a, it's a hemoglobin alpha. But uh, they are derived from the uh, hemoglobin alpha genes, uh, which exist in the genome of the Ancestral organisms, uh, uh, ancestral organism of the mammals. So the ancestral organisms uh, sometimes uh, uh, divided into two groups, uh, and uh, one of the, uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> branch uh, 
is reached to the mouth and the other uh, go to the uh, human. And after the divergence, uh, okay, it is called the speciation. After the divergence, mutation occurs. Then the uh, amino acid sequences are gradually changed. So the current hemoglobin alpha of mouse and uh, human hemoglobin alpha are different from each other. And they are also different from the ancestral uh, hemoglobin alpha. Of course, we don't know uh, how uh, the sequence of the hemo uh, ancestral hemoglobin alpha. But uh, uh, we can uh, uh, get the amino acid sequence data from the uh, mouse hemoglobin alpha and the human hemoglobin alpha. Okay, this is a comparison of the human hemoglobin alpha and the mouse hemoglobin alpha. And the colon indicates the identical part and the dot indicates the uh, uh, site. Well, where <clears throat> amino acid is a substituted, uh, but the uh, uh, substituted amino acid is, has uh, uh, similar physical chemical characters. And the blank indicates the uh, 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 site where the amino acid is substituted with uh, totally different physical chemical characters. Uh, but anyway, uh, human and mouse uh, both belong to the mammals and they are close to each other. Therefore, the, uh, uh, they are uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, highly, uh, 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 their sequence is uh, very uh, similar to each other. So about 140 amino acid residues, only 20 amino acid, uh, 20 residues are substituted. So, uh, okay, so uh, I explained the, uh, the homology. So similarity in sequence and the structure, uh, similarity in sequence and the structure among proteins derived from common ancestry. So in this case, so the human hemoglobin alpha and the mouse hemoglobin alpha, which derived from the uh, ancestral hemoglobin alpha. So uh, they are similar to each other. So the relationship between the uh, human and the mouse hemoglobin alpha uh, uh, is called uh, homologous. Okay, so why the, the this idea is important? Okay, so uh, this is uh, my acquaintance, Tim Hubbard uh, wrote in this paper that the major, uh, major objective of the analysis of protein sequence is to discover which are uh, common ancestor. So uh, which uh, common ancestor means uh, homology. And determining uh, evolutionary relationship is useful because it generally implies a common or a similar function. Okay, let's see this figure again. Okay, so hemoglobin alpha, a mouse hemoglobin alpha and human hemoglobin alpha derived from the uh, ancestral hemoglobin alpha. Therefore, these uh, proteins are uh, have a similar, uh, uh, okay, correctly speaking, these two, pro uh, as for the hemoglobin alpha, they, are, they have the same functions, but uh, uh, during the course of the evolution, uh, the mutation changes the sequences. So sometimes the functional change occurs, but uh, uh, we don't uh, neglect, uh, uh, we will neglect such uh, details. And, uh, uh, but anyway, the proteins derived from the common ancestor, uh, so uh, due to the common ancestry, the, these pro, the, uh, <coughs> progenitors proteins have the similar fu uh, functions and the similar structures. Therefore, if we can, uh, okay, so therefore we, if we can identify the uh, sequence sim similarity, we can infer the uh, sequence and the structure. Okay, I'll tell it later. Okay, so uh, let's consider the mutation. There are three uh, basic steps of the mutations. So the substitution, insertion, and deletion. Substitution, change, so this is the ancestor and this is a progenitor. And uh, in this case, uh, okay, uh, it is not the amino acid sequence. It is a nucleotide sequence, but the, uh, the, uh, this position, 
is changed from G to A. So this is a substitution. Okay, so in this case, the ancestor doesn't have this region, but the uh, progenitor has uh, this segment. This is the insertion. This is called the insertion. And uh, uh, in contrast, in this case, ancestor has uh, this blue uh, se uh, segment, but the uh, progenitor lost the, this segment. Uh, this event is called deletion. So the uh, <coughs> during the course of evolution, uh, amino acid sequence uh, has changed, even if they derived uh, they are derived from the common ancestry. Uh, this uh, and uh, these uh, changes are called molecular evolution. So molecular evolution uh, means substitution, insertion, or, and the change of the sequences uh, through the substitution, insertion, and deletion. And uh, evolution is often used to uh, uh, as a so, for example, the uh, uh, complex uh, become complex or, or become a uh, good or improved or something like that. But uh, in the case of the molecular evolution, it just tells the uh, describes the change of the sequences. Okay, so uh, biochemical function, the three dimensional structure are uh, often often conserved or similar among homologous proteins. So, okay, so as I uh, to, uh, already explained, the, uh, these two proteins derived from the common ancestral proteins, therefore the, uh, uh, <coughs> the amino acid sequences have, uh, have been changed uh, by the uh, mutations, but uh, they share the uh, similar function or similar structures. So the homology is a clue to infer the uh, uh, protein structure or function. Okay, let's consider a case. Okay, let's consider uh, we have a protein, the amino acid sequence of protein A, the, uh, whose structure or function is unknown. If we can find uh, the protein A, uh, it shows a, a significant sequence similarity to protein B. And if protein B, the whose function, uh, 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 if the function or structure of protein B is known, then uh, so the significant sequence similarity means uh, uh, they are homologous. If so, uh, protein A uh, is inferred to have the similar function or structure to protein B. So this is a very basic uh, uh, inference uh, 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 style of the uh, <clears throat> uh, prediction style of the uh, uh, protein function or protein structure. But uh, we can get more information about the function of the structure of proteins by comparing the homologous proteins. Okay, uh, this uh, slide shows uh, three steps of the comparative analysis of the homologous sequence data. At the first, uh, the homologous amino acid sequences are collected. Then uh, an operation uh, called multiple alignment is taken. Then based on, the, based on the multiple alignment, we can infer the structure and the function and more information is uh, obtained from the uh, multiple alignment. Okay, let's consider a concrete example. Okay, this is an uh, enzyme or uh, lysozyme, uh, uh, as uh, I already shown, you uh, show, uh, show, uh, shown. So the this is a human lysozyme, but the lysozyme uh, is widely distributed among the animals. So this is a bovine lysozyme, this is a chicken lysozyme, this is a trout lysozyme, and uh, uh, this is a silkworm lysozyme and fruit fly lysozyme. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, before uh, entering into the uh, explanation of the, uh, uh, the evolution, 
I'll explain the uh, format of the sequence, uh, amino acid sequence data. So this format is called FASTA format. And this is a standard format of the sequence data in the field of molecular biology, not only in the molecular evolution, but also in the various field of the uh, molecular biology. This FASTA format is used. Okay, the line uh, start with this inequality symbol is called the annotation line. So the, this line starts with the inequality symbol. And uh, in this uh, line, the annotation is such as database ID. So this one, uh, uh, LYC underscore human. And this is a, a database ID in a Uniprot database. And the source organisms, uh, in this case, human. But uh, ordinarily, we use the academic name. So homo sapiens is used. And this is the enzyme name. And such information is uh, described in the annotation line. And the other line uh, is uh, 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 describes the sequence data by the one letter expressions. So this is a faster format. And here, the uh, 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 sequence data of the lysozymes are uh, 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 written by the FASTA format. Okay, let's consider the sequence between the bovine and the chicken, uh, chicken lysozymes. And the bovine and the chicken lysozymes have the same length, but the amino acid residues are uh, changed. So for example, here, the uh, uh, K and A, so it is a lyse lysine and alanine. It is substituted with the uh, R and S. R, uh, R indicates the arginine and S is a serine. So these two residues are substituted here. Uh, likewise, this part is uh, RDH is substituted with the KG, KGT. And this SS is substituted with QA. So the bovine and the chicken, they are uh, they uh, <clears throat> belong to the vertebrates, and so the the lysozyme genes are derived from the uh, common ancestor of the vertebrate, and the uh, lysozyme of the uh, uh, common ancestors of the vertebrates. But uh, uh, during the course of evolution, the 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 amino acid sequences are substituted. Okay, so, but uh, uh, let's compare the human lysozyme and the bovine lysozyme. Uh, the length is, uh, 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 length of the bovine lysozyme is uh, one residue shorter than the human lysozyme. So, oh, this part. And uh, oh, let's compare the uh, trout lysozyme and the chicken lysozyme. Okay, so the uh, trout is also belong to the vertebrates, but they, I mean, I see the sequence of the trout lysozyme is, uh, okay, three residues shorter than the uh, chicken lysozyme. And uh, silk one, uh, so the insect lysozymes is more shorter, uh, so yeah, shorter than the vertebrate lysozymes. And even among the uh, uh, insect lysozymes, their lengths are different. Such different lengths is generated by the Okay, insertion or deletion events during the course of evolutions. Okay, so the substitution, insertion or deletion, the, the lysozyme sequence has changed uh, from the uh, common ancestral uh, lysozyme genes, uh, lysozyme, uh, lysozymes. But the, in order to uh, compare the homologous sequences, the, uh, we need to make a correspondence between the, uh, 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 I don't know how to say, uh, uh, the, okay, so uh, we need to uh, uh, locate the corresponding amino acid region at the same position. Uh, for the uh, comparison of the homologous sequences. Mm -hmm. 
because who, uh, so the simple uh, to, uh, superposition uh, ca uh, cannot, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, to, uh, due to the, uh, the uh, insertion or deletion, simple superposition of the sequence uh, is not enough uh, to compare the homologous sequences. We need to make a correspondence of the uh, amino acid residues, uh, 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 which is equivalent uh, in the uh, <clears throat> meaning of the evolution. So, okay, this is alignment. I, I think it is better to explain by using this alignment. So this is a multiple alignment of the uh, six lysozyme amino acid sequences. And uh, the difference from the uh, this uh, original data is this uh, alignment includes a uh, hyphen in these regions. Okay, this hyphen is inserted to make a, a correspondence of the uh, equivalent residues of the uh, lysozymes. Uh, because you know the uh, as I told the during the course of evolution, not only substitution but also insertion or deletion events occurs. The such events change the length of the uh, uh, amino acid sequences of the lysozymes. So by inserting uh, this uh, 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 so uh, null characters, null characters, uh, the null character is called gap. So by inserting gaps, the, uh, the sequence, residue position is shifted and the equivalent residues are uh, placed at the uh, identical uh, locations. So for example, the, this arginine and this cysteine are uh, uh, <coughs> invariant uh, all, uh, among the all the uh, six uh, lysozymes. Such uh, invariance uh, uh, can be uh, uh, detected by inserting uh, these gaps. So the so multiple alignment is an operation to uh, that uh, corresponding uh, amino acid residue are located at the same position by taking into account the insertion and the deletion. Uh, for such a purpose, another character called the gaps. Uh, so the hyphen is a gap. The gaps are inserted to adjust the positions. And by uh, making the multiple alignment, we can identify the uh, which amino acid residues are conserved among the lysozymes. Okay, then the, such conservation indicate that the, the such residues are important for the function of uh, structure or function of the enzyme. Okay, if uh, it uh, it is not so important, it can be substituted with the other amino acid residues. But uh, uh, such conservation, uh, 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 so such invariance indicate if the residue is substituted with other residues, the uh, lysozyme may not uh, exert its activity. Therefore, the, these residues are, are invariant among the lysozymes. So by making a multiple alignment, we can infer the uh, functional sites of the enzyme. And uh, in this case, here, the uh, a cluster of invariant sites, uh, invariant amino acid residues are observed. Okay, so minute. Okay, so the uh, this region constitutes the uh, pocket region or cleft region, in which bind to the substrate of the uh, lysozyme. So by making a multiple alignment, we can infer the functional sites of the proteins by detecting the uh, cluster of the uh, invariant sites. And uh, it, okay, I explained the faster format here, but the, there are several different format to express the multiple alignment. Uh, this is a uh, this uh, expression is called the crustal format. 
So uh, in the crustal format, the uh, several symbols are shown in the bottom of the alignment. Okay, so colon, dot, and uh, asterisks. Asterisks uh, indicate the invariant side, and the colon indicate strong conservation with uh, physical chemically similar uh, residues. So for example, here, the colon uh, is uh, pressed here, and this side, the uh, amino acid are substituted, but the uh, leucine and the methionine. So M is uh, indicated the leucine and the M indicates the methionine. Uh, leucine and the methionine belong to the same uh, group, uh, hydrophobic amino acid residues. Therefore, the, they share the same uh, physical chemical characters. And, uh, okay, let's see this side. This side, occupied by the K and R. K indicates the lysine and R indicates the arginine. And lysine and arginine have the uh, uh, positive charge. So these two amino acid residues also have the, the same uh, physical chemical characters. And, uh, okay, let's consider the dot, okay? So this side uh, has a dot and uh, leucine and barine. Leucine and barine, uh, L and V indicate the leucine and barine and uh, leucine and barine belong to the hydrophobic group. And phenylalanine, F indicates the uh, amino acid residue called phenylalanine. And uh, phenylalanine is also hydrophobic, but the uh, side chain is a bit different from the other hydrophobic residues. Phenylalanine has an aromatic ring in the side chain. Therefore, the, uh, uh, in the meaning of the hydrophobic character, uh, they share the uh, physical, uh, same physical chemical characters. But the, uh, the side chain structure, consider the side chain structure, uh, phenylalanine uh, is uh, different from the leucine because of the uh, because this one has an aromatic ring. Therefore, the uh, dot is used to indicate the conservation. Excuse me. Uh, uh, Professor, should I say it? No, I yeah. think it's time for have a break. Is will you continue or what? Uh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I'll explain uh, uh, three more slides, then uh, take a break. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. okay, so uh, now the multiple alignment, if multiple alignment is generated, uh, by analyzing the multiple alignment, we can obtain the uh, uh, structure, uh, structure or functional information from the uh, aligned sequences. And today I'll explain about the prediction of the functional sites. And I prepared the uh, uh, tree based uh, uh, to medicine, but uh, I, I think it is better to skip this one. Okay, anyway, uh, uh, I already explained about it. So, by uh, detecting the uh, cluster of the conserved sites and mapping it on the three-dimensional structure, we can predict the functional sites. So uh, functional site prediction. Uh, invariance of the amino acids means that the sites are under strong functional constraint. Therefore, the sites, the amino acid residue uh, cannot be changed. Inversely, the functionally important sites are predicted by detecting the conserved sites. Okay, the, uh, these uh, cluster of the invariant sites are called a uh, motif. It is a short stretch of the conserved amino acid sequences. And uh, uh, in many cases, uh, in a, a single, a single amino acid uh, 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 sequences, uh, uh, not one, but uh, several uh, motifs are observed. And such motifs are often dispersed uh, uh, along the uh, prime uh, amino acid sequences. But uh, when, uh, as I told, the amino acid sequences are folded into three-dimensional structure. And if uh, when uh, uh, 
we map the motif region on the three-dimensional structures. Uh, they are closely located uh, 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 <coughs> uh, like this, uh, even if they are dispersed uh, along the uh, primary uh, amino acid sequences. So, uh, for example, in this case, uh, the, this is a pocket or a cleft region, and the motif region constitutes a, a, a catalytic site of the enzyme. And this protein, if these proteins uh, interact with the uh, other proteins, then this region may constitute the interface region. And uh, uh, when uh, it folds into the three-dimensional structure, the, uh, uh, it requires a hydrophobic core uh, in inside of the structures. And this region uh, constitutes a hydrophobic core. Okay, so uh, uh, now I'll take a break, 10 minutes break, and uh, next I'll explain about the uh, uh, concrete example, uh, how to uh, use the detection of the uh, motif region. Okay, uh, let's take a break. So- okay. Thank you very much, uh, Tosensei. So we are going to have a break, and please join again, 10.56. 10 yeah. Okay, 10 minutes, thank you. Say, I already start the recording. Ah, uh, okay. Then, uh, so maybe you can continue. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue the lecture. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, a. <clears throat> It's three steps of the comparative analysis of the homologous sequence data. And I'll explain the uh, steps by using the concrete example. So uh, uh, it is a characterization of retroviral proteases. So it is related to the uh, development of the uh, HIV protease inhibitor. Okay, this is a schematic uh, diagram of the uh, retroviral reverse transcriptases. And uh, retroviral re reverse transcriptase uh, is a multi-domain enzyme, which has a, a protease domain at the N-terminal region and uh, RNA-DNA directed DNA premise domain. So it is a, a reverse transcriptase, the, uh, the, uh, has a, a reverse transcriptase activity and ribonuclease H domain and uh, uh, DNA endonuclease domain. The uh, target is uh, this region, uh, protease domain. And uh, 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 I, I think I forgot to mention it, but the AIDS virus, so HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, is a member of the little viruses. And, uh, okay, so uh, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> so the uh, retroviral proteases uh, have, uh, have long been investigated, uh, but the functional mechanism of the protease uh, has not been had not been identified uh, as a, uh, about uh, fifty years ago. <laughs> it, it, it is a study of my uh, 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 when I was a master student. Okay, so uh, it is a, a, a old story, but anyway, at that time, the uh, the protease, the uh, functional mechanism of the retroviral proteases had not been uh, identified yet. So the there are many proteases. So the system proteases and the uh, serin proteases and the zinc metal proteases. So in order to develop uh, inhibitor of the proteases. It is important to identify the what type of the proteases uh, uh, as a target proteins. So, but uh, uh, as I told, uh, at that time, the uh, the mechanism of the uh, retroviral uh, pro the uh, catalytic mechanism of the retroviral proteases had not been identified yet. And, uh, uh, and as I told. 
and uh, retroviruses uh, include the HIV. So in order to develop the uh, inhibitor of the HIV proteases, it is important to identify the uh, mechanism, catalytic mechanism of the retroviral proteases. So uh, we collect the amino acid sequences of the uh, sequences of the retroviral proteases and make a multiple alignment. Okay, so and we found uh, two regions are highly conserved. So as so this is a, a cluster format and uh, asterisk indicate the uh, invariant region. So this is, region is highly conserved and this region is uh, a bit weaker, but uh, this region is also conserved. But uh, uh, we focused on the, this region uh, uh, <clears throat> and make a consensus sequence of the retrovirus proteases. So this region, so here is a hydrophobic residue and invariant aspartic, uh, aspartic acid residue, threonine, invari uh, invariant threonine, and invariant glycine. And uh, uh, okay, if we add far, uh, uh, other retroviruses, this region, uh, this site is uh, not a big, uh, is not uh, invariant, but uh, uh, conserved with the physical chemical similar residues. So we constitute a consensus sequence like this. So hydrophobic amino acid residue, aspartic acid, threonine, glycine, and the small hydrophilic residues. So by using the uh, consensus sequence, we try to uh, uh, we try to search for the proteases with the same motifs in the uh, databases, amino sequence databases. Then we found that the retro, uh, we also detected the, ret uh, of course, we detected the retrovirus proteases, but in addition, we detected aspartic acid proteases uh, derived from uh, mammals, uh, also has the same uh, motifs uh, of the uh, retroviral proteases. In addition, the uh, so the, this is aspartic acid, uh, called the aspartic acid proteases. And this aspartic acid, invariant aspartic acid is uh, used as a catalytic residue of the aspartic acid proteases. So the, based on this observation, we predicted retroviral proteases uh, as a member of the aspartic acid proteases and this invariant aspartic acid is a catalytic residue of the retroviral proteases. So the, my uh, prediction was published in 1985. And based on this prediction, several groups tried uh, uh, computational and experimental studies. So this group uh, developed uh, uh, model structure of HI proteases by using the uh, 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 three-dimensional structure of the aspartic acid proteases. And these two groups try to uh, inhibit the HIV proteases by using the inhibitor of the aspartic acid proteases. And in 1989, uh, this group uh, reported the three-dimensional structure of uh, HIV proteases. Then they found that the HIV proteases actually uh, homologous to the uh, aspartic acid proteases. Okay, uh, this is uh, the uh, upper figure shows the uh, aspartic acid, uh, uh, three-dimensional structure of the aspartic acid proteases. And this is uh, HIV, uh, uh, the structure of the HIV proteases. So the uh, after uh, four years after the uh, our prediction is uh, 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 the uh, so the proved to be correct by the uh, structure determination, but in other words, without a, uh, our prediction, this experimental study is a. Uh, uh, 
uh, wait for the determination of the three-dimensional structures. Okay, let's try to see. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. Okay, so this is a book uh, named Retroviral Proteases, and it has a section about the uh, prote uh, viral proteases. Okay, uh, uh, here is a, a history of the research of the retroviral proteases, and uh, uh, let's see this part. A major step was taken in our understanding of proteases when sequence alignment revealed the similarity with the asphaltic protease family of enzyme. Uh, so this is my paper. So what the bioinformatics can do, bioinformatics means a computational analysis can do is just prediction or hypothesis construction. But as uh, described here, bioinformatics uh, plays a role as a game changer of the biological studies. So many people investigate the character, uh, char uh, characterization of the retroviral proteases, but uh, they, don't, uh, they uh, didn't get the result. But uh, uh, our uh, computational analysis uh, uh, gave the uh, breakthrough to the field. Okay, so let's try to see the uh, structure. Uh, uh, so the uh, motif region in this, uh, 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 so let's try to map the motif region on the three-dimensional structures. So wait a minute. Okay, so. I'll use a graphic tool called the PIMO. Okay, so while open and so the seven HVPPDB, this is a, a three dimensional structure, a, a retrieved from the protein data bank. Okay, so this is a three dimensional structure of the a, HIV's proteases. Okay, and Okay, now uh, I show the amino acid sequence here. And let's go back to the slide. Okay, so let's try to map the conserved amino acid residues uh, on these structures. So uh, DTG, so. This one and the DG. Okay, so this L and this DTG and this A. So this is a, a motif of uh, the N terminal region. Okay, so change the color red and uh, show it as a sphere. Okay, so next motif is here. So GL and L. So GL and L. So let's change it uh, blue. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'll change the color later. So, and show it as a sphere. Okay, sorry, I changed the, the color of this region. So I'll change it again. So red. 
Okay, and uh, let's map the other invariant residues. So, uh, G, G, I, G, G. Okay, this G, so grising and uh, this grising and this plotting. Okay. So this is not a motif because this is the invariant site is a dispersed. So, so just to show it as a sphere. Okay. As you can see, the uh, motif region uh, dispersed uh, along the uh, primary uh, amino acid sequences, but uh, when it, uh, it mapped on the three-dimensional structure. So, the, this is a, a colored region, this is a red and blue region. So, and the three dimensional uh, uh, structure, they are close to each other. And these invariant residues are also uh, present in the same face of the structure. So, you, uh, okay, so not present in this face, but they are clustered at this face. So, this is the Okay, so oh, uh, the uh, retroviral proteases uh, fit to the, this case. So the uh, uh, <clears throat> emotive region constitutes the active site of the enzyme. So our analysis uh, by uh, detecting the motif region or a stretch of the conserved residues, we can predict the uh, a, 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 a functional site of the retro, retroviral proteases or HIV proteases, HIV proteases. Okay, so uh, uh, I uh, prepared another example of how to uh, uh, obtain the information uh, from the multiple element, but I'd like to skip this one and go to the... Okay, so they go to the actual analysis of the cement proteins. Okay, so... Uh, what uh, we, uh, I try to do is the identification of the conserved amino acid residues of the cement proteins and the mapping the conserved amino acid residues on the three-dimensional structures. Okay, uh, as I told, the uh, five cement proteins from the uh, barnacles are now available. Out of them, uh, I try to use the cement protein 20K at first. The first step is a collection of homologous amino acid sequences. Okay, so if you have the PC, please uh, follow the, uh, my operations. Okay, so uh, open browser. Okay, so uh, this information is described in the PDB file, so please check it. And uh, open browser and uh, okay, search for NCBI. NCBI. Okay, so, uh, NCBI is a uh, uh, Okay, NCBI is an abbreviation of the National Center for Biotechnology Information. And NCBI is uh, approved and funded by the government of the United States. The NCBI uh, uh, houses a series of databases such as GenBank and PubMed. It also provides computational service for bioinformatics uh, analysis of the database such as BLAST. Okay, so uh, we will use the NCBI. 
Okay, eh, no. Okay, so this is a, a homepage of the NCBI. And uh, a type, cement protein 20K and this uh, text field, okay. Cement protein 20K and click search. Okay, the the database are classified by the uh, 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 its uh, specific feature. So literature database, genome database, genes database, clinical database, protein database, PubChem, and uh, uh, each database uh, database uh, database are further uh, classified into several uh, types, and we use protein database. Okay, only one hit is observed. Okay, cement protein 20K and the Megaparanus rosa. This is a source organisms. Okay, let's check it, what it is. Okay, so Megaparanus rosa is a barnacle. So uh, this is a target protein, okay? And uh, okay, uh, here the uh, amino acid sequence of the cement protein 20K is shown. Uh, it is not a faster format, but the one letter uh, expression. By using the one letter expression, amino acid sequence of the cement protein 20K is shown here. So, but uh, we need to collect the homologous sequence of the cement protein 20K. Okay, uh, for that purpose, uh, we can use BLAST. Okay, yeah, uh, there's a discord, uh, the uh, column, uh, uh, LAM BLAST. So click LAM BLAST. Then uh, the, we can jump to the, this page. Okay, before doing the blast search, uh, I'll explain what the blast will do. Okay, blast search. Uh, 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 so the if uh, uh, query sequence is given to blast, then it searched for the protein databases as uh, it searches through the protein databases for the uh, uh, sequence which shows a sequence similarity to the query sequences. So. The, uh, uh, the output of the blast search is uh, uh, amino acid sequences, which shows a sequence similarity to the query sequences. So by using the blast, we can collect the uh, uh, similar sequences to the query or uh, uh, homologous sequences that can be collected by the blast search. So, uh, we can change the parameters, but uh, uh, today we, we try the blast search by the default setting. Okay, so just click blast, then blast search start. So NCBI has uh, 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 all the, uh, the database of the, all the proteins currently available. So it takes a bit of time. Please wait for a while. Okay. The result is obtained.
And uh, okay, so uh, this uh, slide is generated uh, last year. Uh, so last year, only four sequences are detected. But uh, you know, the uh, current blast search nine uh, sequences, which shows uh, the uh, significant sequence similarity to the uh, cement protein 20K are obtained. Okay, let's go here. Okay, so this is a list of the detected sequences. And uh, 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 so uh, important uh, parameter is uh, so E value. So e, the small E value indicates the statistical significance of the uh, detected sequence similarity. So for example, this one, uh, maybe this one. So it's up to the users, but uh, I think uh, 10 to the minus ninth power is enough uh, to uh, judge it, it is a significant. But uh, you know, the considering the name of the proteins, they are also uh, homologous to uh, the CP29. Therefore, uh, we use all the sequences today. Okay, so I'll explain the uh, uh, several type of the uh, uh, blast uh, result, blast search result. Okay, now uh, uh, this is a description uh, uh, tab and uh, click graphical uh, summary. So this is a graphical summary of the detected sequences. So this is a query sequences, a sequence and uh, this is a, a detected sequence is shown here. And red indicates a, a, a high similarity and the blue and the black indicates a low sequence similarity. Okay, and let's click the alignment tab. Then we can obtain the alignment. So the this is, a, I think this is an identical sequence. This is also identical, not identical. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, it is a, though, I don't know, 220 and uh, this is a, okay, so the sequence is uh, identical, but the, the N terminal region and the C terminal region are uh, different. So uh, additional sequences uh, added or deleted. Okay, so I think it is also a member of the Banaco. Oh, let's try to check. Yes, it is a stoked type of barnacle, okay? So the sequence are a bit diverged, but uh, so a motif-like region is observed. Okay, what is this? Okay, it is an acorn barnacle. Hmm. So, uh, as you can see, many system residues are highly conserved. Okay, what is this?
Mm -hmm. Okay, so this protein is not detected last year, but uh, <laughs> it is not belong to the uh, uh, Crustacean. It is a fungi protein, fungal proteins. So taxonomically different uh, species, the homologous sequences are obtained. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is uh, interesting. Okay, let's try to check this one. Okay, this is a Econ Barnacle. Okay, this is a stroke to type of barnacle. So, uh, so <laughs> this uh, protein, uh, the detection of this protein is uh, unexpected, but anyway, the, we can uh, correct the homologous sequences by using the BLAST. Okay, so let's download the amino acid sequences. Okay, go back to the description tab. And uh, okay, so we can download the sequences uh, uh, by checking the, uh, so the only the sequence uh, of the, uh, whose checkbox is checked. So like this, but uh, uh, today we use all this, uh, that we don't uh, download all the sequences. So select all, click select all, then go to download and uh, and faster complete select faster complete sequence then in your download folder a secdump.txt is generated it includes all the uh, amino acid sequences okay so go to the down oh no uh, Download the folder, and this is a secdump txt. Okay. Okay. So this is a. a Mega, uh, mega baroness losa, mega baroness losa. Uh, second one is also mega baroness losa, mega baroness losa. And the con, concoderma, concoderma hunter. And okay, this one. So the, uh, the same sequence is uh, obtained. And uh, this one. And this is strange, this uh, long sequences, uh, the uh, fungal proteins. So I think uh, for the sequence comparison, the such a different length uh, is inhibited the uh, correct comparison. So today I'll skip this one, delete this one and make a multiple alignment by using the remaining sequences. So uh, the uh, secdump dot text uh, is a faster format file. So now we finish the correction of the homologous amino acid sequences. Next, uh, we will make a multiple alignment of, uh, of the uh, corrected sequences. Okay, so next, try to search MAFT. MAFT is a, a multiple alignment tool. 
So go to mouth and so mouth a multiple sequence alignment program. Okay, let's click the site and use online version. So click online version and select. Then file chooser is open and select uh, secdump.txt. It is a downloaded file and open. Okay, so here secdump.txt is described. Okay, so uh, uh, we can set the parameters, but uh, today we will use the uh, default setting. So just click submit. Okay, so the uh, multiple sequence alignment of the uh, cement protein 20K is generated like this. And as you can see, there are several, okay, uh, let's uh, enlarge the figure. So this is a cluster format. So the asterisk uh, under the alignment indicates the invariant site and the colon indicates the uh, site occupied by the physical chemical, uh, the same physical chemical uh, uh, features. And the dot indicates the sites uh, weakly conserved by the uh, physical chemical similar residues. Okay. So uh, out of the detected sequences, 6-L-E-K, this is a, a, a ID code of the protein, a protein data bank. So the structure of the uh, cement protein 20K is available. Okay, so this is the explanation. So search MAFT and go to the home page of MAFT. And uh, so uh, I, I skipped the explanation of the MAFT. So MAFT in bioinformatics, MAFT is a program used to create multiple sequence alignments of amino acid or nucleotide sequence. And published in 2002, the first version of MAFT used an algorithm based on progressive alignment in which the sequence were clustered with the help of fast Fourier transform. And the subsequent version of MAFT have added other algorithms and modes of operation, including options for faster alignment of a large number of sequences, higher accuracy alignment, and alignment of non-coding RNA sequences and the addition of new sequence to existing alignments. So the, this program is developed in Japan and uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, Yeah, and I also involved in the development of this program and uh, so I'll use this program. Okay, and uh, go to the homepage of MAFT and uh, click the online version. Uh, so, and uh, you can download the, uh, the MAFT, so Mac OS version, Windows version, Linux version. And uh, so uh, you can uh, make a multiple alignment by using your own computer. But today uh, we used the uh, online version. So go to the online site and you can paste the uh, faster format amino acid sequences in this input to, uh, to text area. But today uh, we select the, uh, so the, uh, we use the select button and uh, from the file chooser, the, uh, the uh, a first format sequence is selected. Then 
uh, as I told, the, we can uh, modify the parameters, but today uh, with the default setting, uh, uh, click the submit button and make a multiple alignment. Okay, so this is alignment. And uh, uh, so now multiple alignment of homologous sequences are generated. So next step is uh, based on the uh, uh, amino acid uh, uh, multiple alignment, uh, detect the conserved amino acid residues and map it on the three-dimensional structure. So uh, at first, uh, let's obtain the coordinate data of the two, uh, cement protein 20K. So as I told, 6LEK. It is a PDB ID. So go to the PDB site and get the 6 LEK. So oh, search the PDB and go to RCSB PDB. And uh, this is a, a, a search box and uh, uh, type 6 LEK in, in this text field. Okay, let's try. And uh, open a new window and uh, okay, RCSB PDB. Okay, so six L E K the PDB ID. Okay, so the structure is shown here. Okay, so. Okay, let's download the uh, coordinate data. Okay, download files. Okay, so currently the PDB it, it, it provides two types of the format. Uh, uh, provides the structure data by the two types of the format. The PDB format is a, 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 a legacy format. And uh, they uh, to recommend to use the MMC format. So uh, today uh, we download the, uh, this structure by the MMC format. Okay, so select this, okay. Then the in your download folder, 6 lekshift is generated. This is a stru uh, structure data of this protein. So the uh, CP20K. Okay, so. Uh, where is the. Yeah. Let's close and open it again. And the file open download and the six zero k dot the shift. This is a downloaded file and click open. So this is a structure of the uh, CP20K. Uh, and show display sequence. Okay, okay so by a uh, Based on the multiple alignment uh, generated by MAFT, we map the invariant site on the three-dimensional structure. So uh, this uh, H, H is a histogen. So H. M A H M A H. Okay, so this is history. 
So second sequences correspond to this structure. So row 6 LEK is the second, uh, second aligned sequence is 6 LEK. So uh, based on the, this uh, second sequences, we map the conserved uh, invariant amino acid on the structure. And next one is uh, this invariant system. So GVC. And the next is uh, this system. And the next is uh, this system. So many system is is uh, conserved as an invariant. Okay, so if you select the co-invariant residues, changes are colors and show it as a different expression. So like this. Okay, so it takes time to map all the invariant residues. Now from here, I'll use the, my slide and just describe the result. Okay, so uh, before uh, explaining the uh, uh, result, I'll explain the graphics tool uh, I used today. Uh, it is a PIMO. Okay, PIMO is a, a tool uh, developed by the Python. And uh, uh, there's a commercial version, but uh, uh, also a free version is available. And I'm using the free version. Okay, uh, up terminal and type PIMO, then PIMO is open. And from file, uh, the file menu, uh, select open. And select the uh, shift file and click open. Then the structure is shown here. As I told, the uh, a shift file or PDB file just include the coordinate data. So the series of the numerical values and we cannot obtain any uh, uh, insight uh, about the structure uh, uh, from the uh, such a numerical values. But uh, by <coughs> using the graphical tools, we can get the uh, uh, various insights about the proteins. Okay, so this is alignment wire and uh, map the conserved regions uh, on the structure. Okay, so <coughs> there are many invariant residues, but uh, among them, uh, out of them, the, the uh, cons uh, invariance of the system region is quite uh, specific for these proteins. And in many cases, system residue is used as a catalytic residue in some enzyme. However, cement protein 20K is not an enzyme. It is a, a, a adhesion protein. So the, in addition, uh, so many, uh, it is not to make so many Catalytic residues are not required for the ordinary enzyme. So, but uh, many uh, system residues are conserved as an invariant. So we can neglect the possibility that the, uh, that the system residues carries a catalytic activity. As a possibility as a uh, uh, system residues, uh, is involved in the formation of the disulfide bond. So let's consider two system residues. The system uh, uh, residue has a, a, S, a SH group a, in the uh, side chain. And this SH group, uh, if two system uh, residues uh, are present, the, this two uh, say SH residues interact with each other and the covalent bond is generated. This covalent bond is called disulfide bond. And uh, the proteins uh, <coughs> maintain the three-dimensional, uh, often uh, maintain the uh, three-dimensional structure by forming a uh, uh, disulfide bond. 
So, but the, we mapped the three dimensional uh, 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 invariant uh, system residues on the three dimensional structures. But uh, uh, we found that the invariant system regions are not always form the disulfide bond. Okay, I think it is better to map. Bibin says, how long I can use? Uh, will, you will, you still have time about maybe, <laughs> you will finish uh, 12, uh, 26. 26, okay. Yeah, or then, maybe 12, 30. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then uh, I think it is better to map all the invariant regions on the structure. So, uh, so okay, so I finished this one. So C and C. And this, BC and HPC. And GSC and this C IPC and HPC and HHC and HCH and CSC. Okay, so let's change the color. And make it so fair. So the red sphere indicates the uh, invariant system residues. And for example, here and here, uh, close enough, and I think this region uh, constitutes a disulfide bond. Uh, but this one, this one, uh, this is closely located, but there's no uh, covalent bond between them, likewise. This one and this one is uh, separated, and so there's no uh, covalent bond between them. So, so as described here, the uh, many system regions are invariant uh, in uh, cement protein 20K but they are not always form the disulfide bond. And uh, cement protein 20K may be uh, involved in, uh, wait a minute, I'll check the... Uh, so the conservation indicates the ratio is under strong functional or structure constraint. But uh, if system regions are not involved in the catalytic function or disulfide formation. Why are system regions are conserved? And CP20K is considered to be involved in the interaction with the surface of the basal plate and the external substrate. So system regions may be involved in the interaction with the surface of the basal plate and the external substrate. So the uh, so the this is just a prediction. So experimental support is required, but uh, uh, only from the sequence data we can predict the fu uh, functionally important site uh, by the sequence comparison. Okay. So next, I'll explain the uh, other example. So cement protein 100K. 
Uh, okay, at first, uh, we tried the collection of homologous amino acid sequences. It, it is the same procedure, but uh, uh, let's try. Okay, close, close, and go to the uh, NCBI. So go to NCBI and the cement protein 100K. Okay, so protein, uh, in protein database, four hits are obtained. And there are the list of the detected sequences. Hmm. But you know, the mega baranas losa, it is a acon barnacle. So uh, I select this one. So the comparing to the cement protein 20K, it is uh, longer. So the, it is a uh, uh, 993 amino acid residues in length. Okay, so let's try to collect the homologous sequences of the cement protein 100, okay? So go the page of the Lancet Lamp Blast. And by using the default setting, click Blast. So the it is longer than the uh, cement protein 20K. Uh, it takes a, a longer time to obtain the uh, such a result. Please wait for a while. So, during the time, I'll explain the details of the analysis. Okay, go to NCBI. And uh, at the NCBI, in the text field, type cement protein 100, okay and click search, then the uh, result is obtained. So the number indicates the hit, number of the hit for each database. So uh, in this case, the uh, protein, the four hits are obtained. And click protein, then the, uh, okay, so uh, it will omit uh, one page, but the, the by clicking the uh, protein, the list of the detected sequences are uh, found, uh, listed. And out of them, uh, okay, <laughs> I, I used different uh, uh, barnacles. So, anhibaras, uh, anphytrite. Uh, okay, so it is also cement proteins and So, okay, you can check the source organisms, uh, the taxonomy of the source organism here. So, uh, Anfibaranus uh, anfitrite, the, it is a eukaryote, metazoa, so it is a, a multicellular animal, and Ecdysozoa, Anthropoda, Anthropoda, so, and Crustacea. So the it is uh, it belongs to the Crustacea. So uh, I think it is a uh, uh, so Cilipida, pedia. Therefore, uh, it is a uh, uh, belong to the uh, 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 the barnacles. Okay, wait a minute. Oh. Oh, okay, it finished. And uh, so I used the Mega Banana Slosas uh, uh, CP100K. So the result a bit different from the uh, PDF file, but uh, anyway, uh, many CP100K uh, like proteins are obtained. 
I'm not sure if is uh, everything is uh, belong to the uh, uh, the Barnacles, but the last one, uh, last one is a Mega Baroness Ajax. So the top one is a Mega Baroness Rosa. So the uh, genus is the same. Therefore, the uh, this is uh, this one. Uh, this organism is uh, considered to be the barnacle. Okay, let's try to check. Mega Baranus ajax. Okay, so it is a uh, uh, acon type barnacles. Okay, so the CP100K is longer than the CP20K. So the analysis uh, the takes a longer time uh, comparing to the 20K. So the remaining part are just to explain by using the slide. Okay, so by using the, the amino acid sequence of the this one. Uh, amphibar okay, let's check it. So, amphibar uh, amphibaranus. Amphibaranus. Amphi to light. Okay, it is a combanaco. Okay, anyway, uh, we uh, uh, I didn't try, uh, I didn't use this one, but uh, uh, in this slide, uh, the uh, uh, we show the result. Uh, I show the result of the blast search by using the uh, this organism's CP one hundred K as a query. Okay, so. So uh, click run blast, then go to the blast search page. And by the default setting, click blast. Then the uh, blast search result is obtained. And uh, many, uh, comparing to uh, cement protein 20K, many uh, proteins which shows a second similarity to the cement protein 100K uh, are obtained. And this is a graphic summary. And most of them are uh, almost entire region similar to each other, but uh, some of them shows uh, just a segmental sequence similarity. So for example, this yellow one, this is not so high, uh, this sequence is uh, not so high sequence similarity and the uh, region is very limited. Okay, so for example, this, uh, uh, red sequences uh, entirely uh, entire regions are aligned, but uh, you know the this green sequences only this region of the query sequences aligned uh, to this sequence. So uh, in this analysis, we just selected almost entire region or uh, uh, the uh, amino acid sequences. Uh, Whose, uh, which are uh, aligned with the entire region of the query sequence are selected. So uh, for the such selection, you can use coverage. Coverage means uh, how many region of the, uh, 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 how much region of the query sequences aligned with the uh, detected sequences. So 98% means uh, the uh, query uh, 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 98% of the query sequences aligned with this sequence. Okay, so, okay, this is a uh, uh, alignment tab. Okay, so by, by the same manner, we downloaded the selected sequences of the uh, 
uh, cement protein 100K and uh, the, uh, its relatives. Uh, so this is a faster format file. And by using MAFT, so go to MAFT site, multiple alignment is generated. Okay. So this is a multiple alignment. And finally, uh, we uh, uh, try to map the uh, conserved, conserved means the uh, identical in this case, so invariant in this case. The, uh, we uh, identify the uh, invariant amino acid residues and map on the, uh, I, and I'd like to map uh, the either uh, invariant residues on the uh, three-dimensional structures. Okay, but the three-dimensional structure of the one, uh, 100K, cement protein 100K uh, is not available. Oh, okay, let's check the uh, today's result. The, so this is a uh, uh, last year's slide. So there may be the structure. Okay, so no, proteins have the PDB ID. So uh, even this year, the no structure of the cement protein 100K and its relatives are uh, available yet. So the, instead of the actual structure, we will use alpha fold in such cases. So what is alpha fold? Alpha fold is an artificial intelligence program developed by AlphaBeats Google's DeepMind, which performs prediction of protein structure. The program is designed as a deep learning system and uh, as a, a machine learning algorithms. Alpha fold AI software has uh, had two major versions. A team of researchers uh, that used Alpha Fold 1, uh, so 2018, placed first in the overall ranking of the 13th CASP in 2018. CASP is uh, a contest of the protein structure prediction. And uh, the prediction, the, uh, uh, and this contest uh, is uh, Held uh, every four years, and uh, Alpha Fold One uh, get the first position of the uh, uh, in the context, and uh, a team that is Alpha Fold Two. So this is a, a, a second version. Uh, repeated the replacement in the CAS competition in uh, 2020. The team achieved a level of accuracy much higher than any other group. Alpha Fold 2, uh, the result at CASP were described as astounding and transformational. Some researchers noted that the accuracy is not high enough for uh, a third of, uh, of its prediction and that it does not reveal the mechanism or rules of the protein folding for the protein folding problems to be considered uh, uh, so uh, to be considered so nevertheless there has been widespread respect for the technical achievement okay the one of the important uh, <coughs> goal of the protein informatics is uh, uh, is to reveal the relationship between the amino acid sequences uh, sequence and the uh, uh, a three-dimensional structure of the proteins. Because, you know, the uh, three-dimensional structure of the protein is specified, by, uh, is considered to be specified by the amino acid sequence of the protein. But uh, no one uh, has succeeded to uh, accurate prediction of the uh, three-dimensional structure from the amino acid sequences. And uh, but the alpha fold 
the emergence of alcohol that changes the situation. Uh, uh, the quite accurate prediction is generated by the alpha fold. But uh, you know, the uh, please note this description. The uh, researchers of the scientific field uh, don't want to make a correct uh, uh, prediction of the structure. Yeah, of course, the correct prediction is an important problem, but uh, uh, their interest is to uh, reveal the uh, mechanism of the holding, how the sequence information is transformed into the three-dimensional structure. Such um, uh, the mechanical uh, in, uh, the rule uh, is the uh, research, uh, what the researchers is wanted to know. But uh, alpha fold two uh, can predict correct uh, uh, the structure, uh, but the uh, alpha fold two, uh, alpha fold two cannot answer the question the about the relationship between the sequence and the structure. But anyway, the uh, it is very useful too, and and the uh, cement protein one hundred k the three dimensional structure is not available, so uh, we can use alpha for the database uh, to obtain the predicted structure of the one, uh, cement protein one hundred k. Okay, so. Let's try to search the alpha fold. Okay, so open a browser. And type alpha fold. Then uh, you can find uh, alpha fold protein structure database. Okay, let's click this one. Okay, so alpha for the protein structure database. So cement protein 100K and such. Cement protein 20. Okay, cement protein 100K. And oh, okay, and this is the uh, uh, source organisms uh, the, uh, which belong to the barnacle. So uh, click this one. Okay, this is a predicted structure of the alpha uh, uh, cement protein 100, okay? And we can download the files of the coordinate, uh, coordinate data of the predicted structure. So uh, you can select the PDB format, so uh, legacy PDB format and the MMC format. Okay, so uh, let's uh, select uh, MMC file. Okay, so in the download folder, in your download folder, this uh, shift file is generated. This is a uh, uh, coordinate data of the uh, CP100, okay? Okay, let's try to open the file by using a PIMO. Okay, and the file open. and download and select the downloaded file and open. Okay, this is a structure of the uh, predicted structure. So it is not a real structure. It is a predicted structure of the uh, cement protein 100, okay. And display sequence. So the sequence is shown here. And 
I skipped the uh, to the step of the making multiple alignment, but the, uh, you can uh, use the same procedure to uh, make a multiple alignment of the cement protein 100K. So the, by a, seeing the multiple alignment and the identifies the uh, invariant residues and uh, uh, select the corresponding amino acid residues uh, in, the, uh, uh, in this region. Then uh, change the expression, so color and uh, <clears throat> uh, expression then you can map the invariant residue on the uh, predicted uh, three-dimensional structure of the cement protein 200, uh, 100K. But uh, uh, comparing to the uh, cement protein 20K, the uh, uh, <clears throat> cement protein 100K is highly conserved. And so uh, it means that uh, we should map many uh, invariant residues uh, on this protein, a uh, protein structure. And it takes an enormous amount of time. So uh, I'll skip the actual operation and explain the, uh, <clears throat> how the result is obtained by using the a slide. So <clears throat> this is a PIMO and this is a multiple alignment. Okay, so uh, this is a result of the mapping. The uh, blue region indicates a uh, 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 map to invariant residues. So, uh, uh, So the, uh, by this analysis, not so clear result is obtained. Uh, so, I, but uh, uh, on this surface, uh, more uh, invariant residues are mapped, uh, so, uh, mapped on this surface, but uh, not so clear uh, uh, the result. But anyway, this result suggests that this region may be the uh, may constitute the interface with the other uh, cement proteins. So uh, okay, so CP100K included many hydrophobic residues and is considered to uh, okay. It is not to buy. It is B B involved the. Uh, involved in the interaction between cement proteins. The phase, the phase means the, uh, so uh, relatively many invariant regions are mapped uh, on this phase. So this phase, uh, so this phase, so uh, uh, with many invariant regions may function as the interface for the cement protein interaction. So, but anyway, uh, the, it is uh, uh, based on the prediction, uh, based on the, uh, so it is a prediction based on the prediction, uh, okay? So the, <coughs> this structure itself is a, a result of the prediction. So the reliability is uh, lower than the uh, analysis of the uh, CP200, okay? But uh, anyway, uh, at this stage, we don't have any coordinate data of CP100K. In that situation, the, we should rely on the uh, alpha fold. And uh, uh, currently, many uh, researchers of molecular biology using the uh, alpha fold uh, for, their analysis, uh, for the analysis of their target proteins. OK, so. Uh, this is uh, all, and I think uh, it is a uh, uh, ten minutes earlier. But the, I'd like to close the morning session, and. Uh,
I'd like to start with the study assignment. Uh, 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 the, uh, so I'd like to uh, uh, start the uh, afternoon session with the explanation of the study assignment. Okay, Bibin Sensei? Oh, okay, Sensei, please. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's close the uh, uh, morning session now uh, and uh, take a break. So uh, when uh, next session? Uh, I think we, uh, we follow the schedule. We start from uh, 1 uh, 40. 1 40. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's come back at 1 40. Then okay. I'll explain the study assignment. Okay. And, uh, and I would like also to inform 